Hi there, my name's Nick Stubbs and welcome to ATP Video. In this video I'm going to be talking about Sony Vegas Pro 14, but it will be the start of a new series of videos where I run through video editing processes using Sony Vegas Pro, Premiere Pro and maybe touching on Adobe After Effects, which is the software you use for creating special effects in videos. The reason I'm doing this is because I see video appearing more and more everywhere now. A lot of our viewers are actually using cameras or smartphones that produce video and of course most people do use video. They do film events whether it's holidays, whether it's school events, whether it's walks out with the family, whether it's a day on the beach. You know most people do use video but they tend to upload them to social media without any editing and you just see the basic kind of clip that someone's uploaded. It doesn't always look great so I think a lot of people would benefit from knowing how to actually edit video and for the professional photographers out there uh, maybe you're thinking of moving into video so that you can incorporate that into your your work and your your kind of niche if you like so you can actually do more and more corporate videos commercial videos uh, and kind of move into that area just to expand your business and maybe earn some more money now I'm going to be showing various bits of software such as Sony Vegas Pro Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects uh, which is the special effects software like I said but for now I'm going to concentrate on Sony Vegas Pro so this is the first in the series just to get you kind of introduced to this software I'm using Vegas Pro 14 here but I've used it since Vegas Pro 8 and I think it was around 2007 when I first got my first bit of Vegas software it's actually it was originally created for audio so it's got some fantastic audio features on there if you are an audio file and you either make music or you, you kind of live for music and you edit it and do all sorts of things this is a great bit of software and over the years they've improved the the actual video side of things to match that so it's actually a really good piece of software and I think it's uh, fairly underrated when it comes to software editing and video editing most people tend to use most professionals will use either Sony uh, sorry Adobe Premiere Pro or one of the Apple products you know Final Cut Pro that sort of thing um, so I'm going to start with Sony Vegas Pro and in this video I'm just going to run you through the, the layout of the software and the interface just generally and also show you how to import video clips and what to do once you've got the clip in there. So let's start by showing you how to import a clip. This is the general interface that you get when you load up Sony Vegas Pro. It is adjustable so you can take each section, each quarter, so you've got this section, this section, this section and the bottom section here and you can take each one as it is and you can increase it, decrease it, you can move them up and down depending on what actually you're working on or you can actually unclip them and move them about, you can add sections, remove sections it's pretty much, you know, you can interchange it to your heart's content once you've got to a, a kind of look that you like you can actually go into view, windows layouts and save the layout as your favourite name so if you're maybe working on audio in particular you can call it audio layout one and then save it if you're doing a particular style of video so it's video effects you can call it video effects one that way you can save each different style for whatever bits you've got open that you're working on and once you've kind of messed about so if I pull this out and make that a mess put that there and you know increase this and completely mess the whole thing up then all I've got to do is go to view windows layout go back to Nick and it takes me back to exactly how it was before so that's how that works. Now the four sections here that I've got open that I tend to use the most are this section which is the kind of project media section. It's where this is like your ingredients for, for making the video. So if we start with project media when you load a, a file into here which we'll do now there's actually five ways of doing that I think. It will appear here and it will also show up on the timeline down here. So the ways to actually import video clips are file, open, go to the area of your computer where the file is, click on it, click open and it will open into the file or you can go to file, import, oh lost it, go to file, import, media and it will do exactly the same or when you're in the project media bin you can go to this symbol here and click it and it will say import media, do exactly the same again or you can go to explorer and that will explore your computer, find the file you want, click on it, double click or drag it into the timeline and that will open or you can actually just get the the folder that's open on your computer take the file click on it hold it down and drag it onto the timeline now if you drag it onto the timeline it will appear both in the timeline and the project bin project media bin if you drop it in the project media bin it will only appear there it won't appear on the timeline I tend to just click and drag and drop it onto the timeline and that's the easiest way of doing it 
Now, the nice thing about Sony Vegas and most other bits of software is that when you bring in a new clip, it will ask you if you want to set your project video settings to match the media. Now, the importance of doing this is, uh, if you look down here, my last project was a 1080p, 29.97 frames per second uh, NTSC clip, which is the North American standard. The clip I'm dragging in now is actually a, a UHD, Ultra HD 4K clip at 25 frames a second. So if I didn't change this, then it may affect my playback resolution, it may be choppy, and when I go to render out the software or render out the clip, it may sort of cause problems and issues and it won't look right. So whenever I click, uh, drag a new clip in, I then hit yes, and it will now change the settings to the UHD, Ultra HD at 25 frames a second. I've now got a 4K clip on the timeline. And obviously, once you've got your settings set for a timeline for a particular film or video you're working on, you need to make sure that all the clips you're bringing in are the same. So if I try to mix a uh, 30 frames a second clip with a 25 frames a second clip, rendered it out at 25, the 30 frames a second clip wouldn't look right. It would be juttering as it's trying to play at 25 frames a second. So what it would do is keep dropping frames and it would kind of jolt and jitter about. It wouldn't look right at all. So once you've got this setting, this project setting, then make sure you just use those same sort of style of clips. And also when you drop the file onto the timeline, make sure you haven't got a gap here because if you left that here and then rendered the video out, all of this would just appear as a black video before they get to the good stuff here. Okay, so you need to make sure that you either move it right over to the left of the timeline so that when it starts to render, it will start right at the beginning. It also leaves you room to just drag it out to drop maybe some intro text here. Um, or what you can do is double click on the clip and that will bring up this rendering kind of surround so that it will only render that area. When you come to render it, there's an option, a tick in the box where it will say render loop region only. You say yes, and it will just render this section here and leave everything else alone. Now this will actually loop. So if I play this, it will loop back to the beginning and just keep doing that and going round and round and round. If it, when you do that, it actually has a gray area. Let's turn that off. If it has a gray area, that means it's going to render that area, but it won't click back. It will just keep going and going and going. And it's quite annoying because it'll just go on forever for time immemorial. So you just right click on it, clip loop playback, and then it will loop that region. OK, but the easiest thing to do for now is just to drag it over to the left and start there. So if we now play this clip, you can see it's playing really, really smoothly. And the audio is pretty loud, but I'll come to that in a second. Now, that clip is playing smoothly, even though it's a 4K clip. I've got a fairly powerful computer, but I recorded this on the Panasonic GH4 and output it to a uh, Atomos Ninja Flame, which is a, an external recorder. So I didn't record to the card. I recorded to an external recorder, and I did it at ProRes. Now, ProRes is a very good kind of encasement for a video that allows it to play back well while keeping all the same qualities. So even if I put this up to the best resolution for playback, it will still play well. So that's why a lot of videographers will actually encode their video clips to ProRes. If you took a native 10, uh, sorry, uh, 4K clip from the Panasonic GH4, put it on the timeline, try to play it back in the, the best full preview, it would jutter and stutter and all that kind of thing. Also cameras like the uh, Canon 5D Mark IV video at 4K, or the 1DX Mark II video at 4K, they would all jutter and really have problems. Now you can, if you look up my YouTube channel and go to the proxy editing setting for the 5D Mark IV, you can see that there's a way of actually coping with that and getting around it so it will play back smoothly. I won't go into that now though, but for now it does play. If when you install your clip, it won't play properly, you've got other options up here, so you can go to draft and full, and that will then play back smoothly. You will lose a bit of resolution on the preview, um, and also the colors may look a bit off. I normally go to preview and full just to get the, the best. So if you think about it, this preview window is only about an eighth of what a 4K clip would actually be when it's played full size. So you don't need to be looking at it in full detail. Preview full's okay. Even preview half, you've still got a good clip to watch. So just be aware that you, as long as it plays back well and you can edit well without having all the pain of all the jitteriness, then, then pick one, which one of those suits you best. But anyway, I digress. This section over here, um, like I said, you've got 
the project media bin so we've now loaded our project into there as you include more clips they will all appear here so you can keep referring back to them and doing various edits so you'll end up with maybe three four five I've had a hundred in there before but you can have all your project media in, in this uh, in this bin here next to it is the Explorer like I said so you can go straight to that and drag them into your timeline or project media bin then you've got a transitions panel here where you've got all your different transitions that you can do between each clip so if you bring another clip in let's do that then you can have a transition in between those two clips so if I play that it goes straight to another clip but I can actually have a cross effect uh, now let's actually go to yeah let's do a dissolve so I can have this dissolve so if I dr click and drag that onto those two clips close that down that will now do a nicer transition jolted a bit there as it went over let's do it again but you can see it's just a, a nicer fade of transition so in that folder you've got loads of different ty types of uh, transitions for video clips I particularly like the fade through black to put on at the beginning of a clip so if you drag it and hover it at the beginning until it gets the plus symbol and then just drop it let's get there and then just drop that down the intro to the video will then fade in from black and it looks a lot nicer than the video just starting. I also click and drag it to the end and drop it there and you can see the dissolve is there so when the video finishes it fades out nicely to black so these transitions are really good but don't overuse the ticky tacky ones just try and use the nice basic you know quality ones. The next one along you've got video effects this is where all your funky stuff happens you can do all your color corrections you can do your levels and curves and all the contrast um, you can add glows, fill lights, special effects, loads and loads of stuff in there. That's where all the fun stuff is. When you buy Sony Vegas Pro, if you haven't bought it yet, sometimes you get an offer where a company like New Blue will give you all their all their special effects for you to have for free. Um, if not, you can buy them. There's some good stuff. Neat video is something worth buying. That actually eliminates noise or gets rid of a lot of noise and grain when you shoot at high ISOs. So I use a lot of those effects, but that's your video effects bin there. And then you've got the media generators, which is where you do all your titling and text overlays, all that sort of stuff. So this section here, like I said, is your ingredients box. All the stuff you need to make your video goes in there. The next one along is your preview window, which we've touched upon already. Now you can change the quality of the preview for each of these, like I've said. So just find one that matches well and plays uh, smoothly when you're doing your editing. Won't go into too many of these, but you can output this preview to a another screen or TV or a tablet or something like that you can also put up a grid um, to, to make sure you've got everything aligned correctly you can change that grid to show safe areas so that when you're putting text in you can keep it within those safe areas so that you know that if the video ever gets chopped or when you upload it to YouTube they trim it a little bit the text won't fall off the edges so you can use that and then you've got things like uh, you can actually once you've got a clip running you can hit this button and save a snapshot and for 4k video that will produce something like an 8 megapixel photo so if you've got a really good sharp looking clip you can make a photo from it and you can take infinite amount of photos from a long clip so that's basically this bit here you can play back you can actually record extra you can record audio over what you've already got won't go into that too much now you can play back in uh, by frame by frame so you can do some really fine editing especially when you're doing stuff later on um, when you're putting text on that you want to move with things but again I won't go into that okay so that's that bit then you've got the audio on the far right here so if I play this clip these are the audio levels for that stereo clip so you've got the left and right channels there and you can see it's very loud we're actually getting to the top of the limit there so it's possibly too loud I try and keep them between the 9 and 12 decibel range there so there's two ways, let's get rid of this second clip quickly so I don't get confused. There's two ways of reducing the audio in Sony Vegas. Well, there's actually more, but the two basic ones are first of all here on the audio timeline, you've got the volume control here. It's set at zero at the moment and I can move that audio right down. Let's go to minus eight decibels and then minus 8.4 and then play it again. Let's go to the, where the audio starts and you can see we've now brought that right down to between the nine and 12 at the peak. So that's going to be a lot better for when you're rendering it out. It's a lot nicer, it's a lot cleaner because if the noise gets if the volume gets too much, it can start getting distorted, which isn't good. Now, if you want to put that back to zero, you double click on the volume slider and it will go back to zero. 
The other easy way of actually changing the volume is to hover your cursor over the top of the audio clip and then just drag down. And that will drag down, let's increase the size of this a sec, that will drag down the the audio file. So if we put it back up to the top, you can see all of these peaks of the audio are clipping the top and bottom. So we know the audio is a little bit too loud. So if I click on that and bring it down, we can go back down to minus eight again, 8.1, and you can see we've got plenty of room in between there. And if we play that back now, you can see we're around that same sort of level between nine and 12 again at the peaks. So we know that the audio is actually quite good now, so we can leave that alone. So the audio levels here is very important. If you notice that your audio is way too low, so if we put that down by mistake too low, you can see it's down there, you can hear it's not right. But sometimes if you've got your audio turned off because you're working in a library or something, then you need to pay attention to these the audio levels here and then obviously bring them up. Even with the sound off, you can still bring them up so that the levels are playing in the right sort of area that you want for good audio. Okay, then you've got the timeline itself, which we've already worked on. As you in bring in more clips, you can either bring them to play after each clip, so you can bring another clip in and put it after that one, or you can put it underneath. And then it will it'll automatically create a new video timeline and a new audio timeline. The reason you do that is you may want to chop, I won't go into too much detail here, you may want to slice this one and leave a gap so it will flick between the two clips. So it'll go from this one, to the one below, back to the other one, and that's a real basic edit, but you need to put it underneath for it to be able to do that. Again, that's another video for another day to go into all that sort of thing, but my point is that the more of these you add down here, the more space you're going to need, which means you need to keep moving this up. Okay, but you can also adjust it this way. So there are your four main sections. Again, I won't go into too much detail about what all these are. I will at some point obviously do videos for each section where you can make all your adjustments and all your edits and everything. But for now, this is just to show you the, the basic layout of Sony Vegas, uh, in particular Sony Vegas 14, which you've got here, and also how to import clips and the, the basics of just find, finding your way around the the whole of the layout and the whole of the interface. So I hope that helps for the first video on this series and you know look out for the next video where we'll probably talk about basic edits and things like that. So I hope this helps with uh, your choice if you're looking to buy Vegas or if you just bought it and don't really understand it. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep your eyes peeled for our next in this series on Sony Vegas Pro 14. Thanks for watching.